Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, I'm Michael North. Welcome to a new episode of Understanding China. In this program, we try to see China from inside China, through Chinese eyes. Rather than regarding China as being a phenomenon that one discusses and studies and finds information, we try to involve guests who can see China from a very personal perspective and the way that Chinese people see the world. And we're fortunate that we have a lady who has done some of that in a very entrepreneurial and interesting way, Joanne Jeremy. Welcome, Joanne. Aloha, Michael. Thank you. Aloha. And Joanne lives in Honolulu, but she's had a good deal of experience in learning and teaching Chinese and learning and teaching English to Chinese people. And she has an interesting way of introducing Chinese, which is she tries to reproduce the natural way that one learns a language by listening, responding, context, real world action. So with Joanne Jeremy, there's generally, you don't start with a textbook and a list of vocabulary and start memorizing things and have a script that you go back and she's shaking her head. So no Dick Jane, no C spot run kind of thing in Chinese, right? In Chinese or any other language, Michael? Yeah, yeah, you've, you're, you've had involvement with many other languages as well and you've traveled around the world. Let's just talk for a moment about the fact that we already know a little bit of Chinese. There's already some familiar sounding words and so on. And you can start picking up Chinese almost immediately. And you'll show me how to do that. So we're going to have 30 minutes of a very fun and interesting uh, introductory lesson to Chinese, which will be very sophisticated in a way, but also childlike. That's correct. So it's really simple. We actually use Chinese words every single day. Hmm. We just don't know that we're using it. So we think of Chinese as something very distant, very foreign, very difficult. And actually, it's none of those. It's actually very, very close. You use it every single day. It's as easily as greeting your husband or wife or children. Whenever you see them, you have a, a word or a phrase you normally say to them. What is that? What do you normally say if you haven't seen what your I wife say? in a whole day and then she comes home and what's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? Uh, hello, honey. Hi. Honey, right? Hun honey, and then you ask her how she's sweetie. doing? Hun? Yeah, do you ask okay. her how she's doing? How? How are you doing? So, how, how's your day? So your wife walks in the door and you say? Hun? How? Hun, how are you doing, right? Hun, how are you so doing? So hun, how? Hun? Yes. From honey, han, we abbreviate it, han. Uh, hao, how are you doing? Hao. Han hao actually means very good in Chinese. Uh, very good. Han hao. Han hao. Han hao. Han hao. Have you ever been to a UH game? Yes. Okay, and what do we what do sound do we make when we find the opposing team? When the opposing team is coming in, what do we usually say? Tss, boo. Boo, right? Boo. Yeah. So boo. Hao means not good in Chinese. Not Bu hao, not Bu good. Hao. Bu hao, not good. Okay. Uh huh. And han hao means what? Han hao means very good. Okay. And bu hao means what? Not good. Not good. So you're already using Chinese every single day. Yeah. Every single day. So hao is kind of the core word there. Yes. It's hao is good. Means healthy. Means good. Yep, right. means how, means healthy, strong. means good, means all these wonderful positive yeah. words. So how yeah. is something that you'll hear a lot. The Chinese yeah. even use it when they're greeting each other. Usually you might hear them say what? Ni hao. Ni hao. That's the one word that pretty much everybody knows. Uh, knows yeah. or should know. And ni hao is really easy, too. It sounds like um, a word that we use in English. Ni, ni, right? We all have knees, right? Uh. So like you were greeting your knee. Ni, how are you doing? Ni hao. Oh. Ni hao. Okay, so, so you're using a kind of a mnemonic sort of technique. Um, right? It is a mnemonic. Because hun doesn't mean honey in Chinese. It's not a translation, but it's a mnemonic sort of link. So we'll remember hun hao yes. because how are you, honey? That's right. I'm very good. Exactly. You use it every single day. Got and it. all I'm doing is connecting it to words that I already know in English. Oh, that sounds like a word I already okay. know in English, and I make that connection. Right. So then it's easy for me to remember. It's easy for me to reproduce. Got it. 
Right. Mm -hmm. And then when I hear it, I know what people are talking about. Okay. Something is good. Okay, so han hao, bu hao. And how about this one is really, really common. You say it every single day. I'm sure everybody has a girlfriend named Jennifer. Do you have anyone in your life named Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Several. Several Jennifers. Okay, and oh. what do you do usually, how do you address Jennifer? Jenny, Jen. Right? Usually we call this Jennifer's Jen, right? Could be. And so when you're leaving Jennifer or you're getting off the phone with Jennifer, what do you normally say? Uh, bye. Um, so long. Um, bye. By who? Mm. Bye, Jen. Bye, Jen, right? Bye, Jen. Bye, Jen. See you later. See you yeah. tomorrow. Bye, Jen. Have a nice Bye. day. Yeah. Bye, Jen, right? Okay. So if you place the B with a Z, what do you have? Zai. Zai. Zai who? Zai Jen. Zai Jen. Zai Jen. Zai Jen means goodbye in Chinese. So that's for everybody, not that's just for Jennifer. Not just right? Jennifer. Right? So I could say Zai Jen to you. Absolutely. Zai Jen. Zai Jen. Zai Jen is goodbye in Chinese. So this so is what we're using. Is it Ni Hao? And Zai Jen, they're kind of opposites, right? Yeah. Ni hao hello, is hello, and goodbye. when you're all done, mm -hmm. Zai Jen. That's correct. Oh. Nice. See how easy was that? That was like okay. three seconds, and you've already mastered um, yeah. some basic phrases in Chinese. Of course, the danger is when you say that, especially if you say it correctly, they'll assume that you know the whole rest of the mm -hmm. language and go mm -hmm. running off. Mm -hmm. And so, how do you say, um, I don't speak Chinese? Um, well, I would never say that. Okay, how do you? I would never say you, that in any language. I don't ever, ever close the door. I feel okay. like when you say, I don't speak, you're, you're closing the door. Okay, how so, would you respond then? Um, I would say, well, in the Chinese culture, what I've learned, it's a very humble culture in that they'll never say they're really good at anything, even though if they're the masters of it. Okay. They'll, they'll say, oh, I'm not that good. Oh, it's just a little, no big deal, yeah. kind of thing like that. Okay. So I would, I would say, oh, I'm not that good, or oh, just a little bit, you know, something to keep the door open, even if it's just just as much. Okay. Yeah. So how do you say a little bit Chinese? Uh, yi jian jian. Yi jian jian. Yi jian jian. Sounds uh, like the letter E. Jian okay. jian. Yi jian jian. Yi jian jian so, means a little bit. Oh. Is E like the number one? Or? There is. You see, there's a hundred ways to say any one thing in Chinese. Yeah. So E is also the number one. Yi jian oh. jian. Yeah, I've heard mm -hmm. the word, the yeah. number one. Yeah, spelled Y-I. Right. E, yi jian jian. Mm -hmm. Yi jian jian. Can yi jian you spell jian. that so we can see it on the screen? Yi jian jian. Um, Y-I. Y-I. D-I. A-N, D-I-A-N. Yi jian So jian jian. Jian jian. Jian twice. Just a little bit. Yeah. Y-I, D-I-A-N, D-I-A-N. Three words. Uh -huh. right. I usually like to say wo shou de bu hao. There's a word that you already know in that phrase wo shou de bu hao. Uh -huh. If you had to take a guess, what do you think I'm trying to say? Uh -huh. What words do you hear already in there? From well, we we talked about bu hao uh -huh. before. Wo. So not so good. Mm -hmm. so very good, wo. very good. Okay, you're catching on. <laughs> so wo. Show the bu hao. You don't know show the yet, but no. see if you can make sense of it just from the little bit that you we reviewed. Well, was could be me, could be war, I. War, yeah. right? War. Actually, yeah. in China, it goes like this. War is up here, but in war. America, we do like this. War. Okay. Show the bu hao. What am I saying? Uh, I don't speak so much. Very good. I find Michael. <laughs> awesome. Very good. See, was that difficult? Okay. Even if you didn't know the word shoda, but you know the buhao. And wo is kind of like a common for I. Okay. It's just a wo, wo shoda buhao. In the context that we're speaking, we're talking about dialogue, and we're saying that um, how to say a little bit, and how to say not at all, and how to say. Um, Okay, I let's let's put well. that on the screen so people can grab. I know we're putting a lot of demands on our friend in the control room there, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. wo, how do we spell that in English? Wo, wo w o, w o, mm -hmm. and then shou da, shou da bu hao, s h o u, shou. Sounds like show, like a showboat yeah. show, uh, our TV show. Right. Shou da, da, da. Shou da, so one word, s h o u d e, right? D, show the bu hao, uh -huh. and bu hao we did already. This is, I don't speak very well. I, I don't, don't speak, speak it very, very well. much. Yeah, and it's just a humble way Wo, to say. Shoda, and then bu hao like we had before. Mm -hmm. B u mm -hmm. h a u. Mm -hmm. So four words. Wo, shoda, bu hao. Now, how do you actually 
say that in a because Chinese is very sensitive to inflection and intonation. Absolutely. Whether there's a rising tone That's or a correct. falling That's correct. tone, you can say almost the exact opposite thing. Absolutely. <coughs> in the same way as in English, you know, I could say really. Or really? Mm -hmm. Or really? Mm -hmm. It's the same word, but said three ways. That's right? correct. So, well, show the buhao, you could probably say it in different ways. Mm -hmm. And, you, and could, you could say it very wrong. So, okay. say, it per, say it as well as you can, as well as you know. Wa. So, so wa is the third tone. And actually, it's really tricky when you get into China, you don't often hear the third tone because they abbreviate the third tone. So, it sounds like the second tone. Uh. So, wa, I'm saying it the really long, long slow way okay. that you learn it, but when you actually hear it or speak Speak it or in the environment of Chinese people, you won't hear the wo, you'll hear wo. Okay. Okay, but it's it's the wo, the, the wo. correct is wo. So wo is the third tone. Wo, wo shou de bu hao. Shou de bu hao. So you're and sort the of going shou the de, and then bu hao. Bu hao. Bu, so bu hao. It's like a deeper bu hao, and hao has a third tone. Bu hao. Okay, say the whole thing again. Wo. Show the bu hao. Wa show the bu hao. Uh huh. And that's really impressive to the Chinese people. Also, if you if you want to just uh, not worry about that at all, you can actually use nali. Nali. Nali is great. That will definitely make the Chinese people very impressed with you when you say nali. Nali. In America, nali. if I say to you, "Oh, Michael, you speak so well," Michael will say, nali. "Oh, nali. <laughs> nali. What's that?" Means not at all. Nali, Nali means where, where. Where is this person that speaks so well? Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Yes, because in no. English, in America, we say thank you, right? When somebody gives uh -huh. us a compliment, thank you. Uh -huh. But in Chinese, you actually negate the compliment to show humility. Uh -huh. So you wouldn't say, oh, thank you, yes, thank you, thank you. You would say, uh -huh. where, where? Well, Nali, uh, Nali, where is this like, person that speaks so well? Me, it can't right? possibly be me. Nali. Even though that you know and I know that you know what the reality is. So you is. see, you're communicating cultural nuance through understanding the language. Because in English, that would be really kind of insincere. It would be kind of strange for you to say, um, you speak well, and for me to say, who, where, who? <laughs> It'd be like the Three Stooges or something, right? But in, in Chinese, that's the, it's a sign of the humility that you, that you are, you're not accepting compliments, you're deflecting right. the compliment. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the same thing when you say thank you to somebody, usually in America we would say, you're welcome, right? And um, But in Chinese you would say, um, uh, bu, yeah. thinking, there's like three different ways to say it. Like you're welcome, but it's not really you're welcome, it's more like a don't mention it. Don't mention it, uh, you know, like no big deal, no worries that we were no translating. Big deal. In, in, so this is all, we're talking Mandarin here, Mandarin, right? Absolutely. Uh, Cantonese is a little different. It's a very different. Some of the words may be different. A little bit, um, just a few words are the same a lot. It's very different. It's a completely yeah. different language. But interestingly enough, they're written almost the same. Although you say different things, the characters may be the same between Mandarin and Cantonese. Mm -hmm. They can use the same alphabet, however, their inflections are different, yeah. um, their accents are different, just like in the, if you go into the United States and you go down south, they'll have the, y'all come back, yeah. now you're here. Yeah. You know, we don't say that in New York. No. You know, you will not hear that. So no. it's the same thing, Cantonese and, um, and, Mandarin, and Mandarin are different, but the and language Mandarin is, is completely the language of. Language. of the north and the west of China, and Cantonese is the language mainly of southern China and Hong Kong. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a break for a minute, and okay. we'll be right back Thank with you. Joanne Jeremy. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day.
chance that I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, I so I do. Okay, we're back with Joanne Jeremy, and we're getting into the the very beginnings, the very edges of Mandarin. We're nibbling in a little bit. Thank you so much, Joanne, for being here and Thank for you. being our teacher. And you are up and about in Honolulu, and there are lots of opportunities to learn Chinese, especially in our community. So maybe this will plant a seed for lots of people to learn. Because, you know, we're seeing more and more people from China coming to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. There's still, you know, 20, 25% of our visitors are coming from mainland China now. And that's grown from just 10 years ago when it was less than 5%. So <clears throat> on the streets and in the stores and wherever we go, and to a, to a degree, people are buying houses and they're starting businesses and they're becoming part of our life. Of course, we've always had Chinese as a very strong element of Hawaii's culture for the past 220 years. Mm -hmm. There have been people coming from China, but this new wave of people coming here is, is, is quite unique. They're coming now not as workers in the fields and not as immigrants and so on. They're coming now as investors and as tourists. And mm -hmm. So it really makes sense for all of us to become China friendly and mm -hmm. to understand the a little bit about how people think. Mm -hmm. So how did you learn the Chinese that you learned? This is a really interesting story. You just like went there, right? I did, and <laughs> as an American, I did not have any intention of learning uh, not even a little bit of Chinese because in my mind it was so foreign, it's so yeah. far away, it's so difficult, why bother? I'm only going to be there three months anyway and I'm there to teach yeah, English. Yeah, here you are, so a there's no Haitian born girl, grew up in New York, NYU graduate, couple of languages and why, why, how did you land in China for even for three months? What did you, what were um, you doing? I worked really hard as a teacher in New York City public schools so I decided that I deserved to go to China and work with some really awesome students and so I, I did that. I went to China to teach English mm -hmm. and it was really awesome. It was just amazing. Um, and so I didn't have any intention to learn the language Where did at all. you go? What place in China? Uh, I, w I went to Zhejiang first, the, mm -hmm. the province of Zhejiang. We landed in Shanghai, so that's how they kind of broke us in and introduced, introduced us to the culture. It was really awesome, so we got to hang out in Shanghai for a little bit. Shanghai is like New York, only Shanghai, I did feel bigger. like that when I got Much off the bigger. plane and got off to, yeah. it was amazing, amazing. I was like, wow, I feel like I'm in Chinatown and in New York City all, yeah. also blown up. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this looks just like home. Okay, I just came from there. Yeah. You know, all the way around the world. Exactly back. Yeah. So so Shanghai was amazing. I saw a lot of things that were really amazing that I was wondered, oh, how come we didn't have this in America? The escalator at the airport actually moves only when you're on it. <laughs> There's an idea of the energy saving. Yeah. Um, that was really impressed by, you know, little things like that went really far. So from there, we all got separated out, um, spread out across, you know, Zhejiang province to go teach at our respective um, assignments. So I was assigned to teach at a high school, which was not what I signed up for, but thank God for an open mind, right? Mm. And it was amazing, amazing, because we're teachers. Teachers actually mean something in China. Um, that we were treated like... What's the word for teacher? Lao shi. Lao shi. So what does that actually mean? Teacher, um, uh, old master. It translates to uh, old master, yeah. But okay. it means something. It's important. Like teachers are right up there with celebrities. Yes. So we were ta well taken care of, like VIPs. Yeah. I was brought to a, uh, a five-star hotel, which was like five minutes away from the school that I was teaching. It was amazing. I mean, they had like, and as we entered, they were lined up and like welcomed us as if we were celebrities. It was mm. really, really awesome. Yeah. Well, well taken care of um, for the whole time that we were there. Picked up and taken what to What town were you in? I was in Shaoxing. In Shaoxing. Shaoxing. Right, now, right outside of Shaoxing is Kachao. Shaoxing is famous because it's a great textile. Mm -hmm. um, it's famous for its textile. But right outside of there is Kachao, this little um, suburban town right after that. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. It was amazing. The students were absolutely amazing. Classes were huge, like 50 students. But obviously How do you say student great. in Chinese? Shui <laughs> Sheng. Shui Sheng. Shui Sheng. Uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. Uh -huh. Could we let's put those two words up on okay. the screen for a little Teacher, more? Lao Shu. Lao Shu. Let's spell that. L A O. L A O. S H I. S H I. Lao Pronounced Lao Shu. Lao Shu. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. And I learned that the hard way. 
<laughs> and uh, Shui Sheng is student X U E Shui 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 Sheng S H E N G S H E Shui Sheng X U E S H E N G We got that teacher and student Shui Sheng X U E first word second word S H E N G Shui Sheng Am I saying that correctly? Uh, the pronunciation doesn't sound exactly, but um, you're, you're in the ballpark, which is great. But th this, um, how I learned it will help you learn it. Okay. I learned it by making a very big mistake. I think I thought about language. you got to kind of be a little bit of a daredevil and be uh -huh. willing to make mistakes. Uh -huh. So I made a huge, mortifying mistake. Oh, and because of that, I'm able to speak correctly. I'm able to hear correctly. What did you do? I just, I totally botched it. I botched it so bad. Oh. Um, because... You have such a big smile, they forgave you right Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. It worked out. It worked out because... Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm able to like recover really quickly. And so um, I wanted to introduce myself to the class. I wanted mm. to tell them in Chinese that I am your teacher, but I couldn't hear the differences out in the tones. They all sounded to me, lao shi, lao shi, lao shi, lao shi, sounded all the same to me. I couldn't hear any difference. What do those again say them? Shi, 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 shi. What are the other variants? You were... So shi, first tone. Yeah. Shi, second tone. Shi, shi. Yeah. Those are the four tones. Lao, and with Lao, they mean three completely different They're completely different. different but what do they it mean? It sounded all the same to me. But they actually, they, I said it completely wrong. I said Lao Shu. <laughs> Lao Shu. Yeah, it sounded, because I can remember Shu. It sounded like Shu. I was like, maybe Lao Shu. <laughs> so I totally blew it right. because Lao Shu means something comes really, really different. Um, the weekend before, I tried to introduce myself to my students in Chinese, just to kind of show them that I'm making the effort and um, that for them, that I understood how hard it was for them to transfer to English. Hmm. So, and um, the weekend before that, the other teachers and I tried to learn this song, this Chinese song, a very popular song. It used to have a summer song. They play it over and over and over everywhere you go. Uh, called Lao Shu Ai Da Mi. Lao Shu. Lao Shu. So maybe oh. that's the Shu, that connection that I made with the oh. Shu. It's stuck in my head. Lao Shu Ai Da Mi. Lao Shu, Lao Shu, Lao Shu. So it sounded close to Lao Shu to me. Okay. And then so I tried to introduce myself to the students and I said, well, Shu, you mean the Lao Shu? And they all started cracking up because Lao Shu means mouth. <laughs> so I said, I am your mouse to this class. And they all, I mean, these are like really respectful Chinese students. They're very conservative, but they couldn't help it. Their guts So what's, the, what's the correct way Lao to say it again? Lao shi. Say the whole shi. thing. Wa shi. Lao shi. At the end. Wa shi. I am your teacher. Oh, yeah. Wo shi. Wo, wo, wo shi. We, we're familiar with that. Ni de. Your, your. Right. Lao shi. I said it's the correct. Lao shi. Ni de lao shi. Lao okay, shu, and the wrong shu. way is lao, wa shu, anything else is the wrong lao shu. way. Lao shu, that's the wrong okay. way. That's what I said, the wrong okay, way. So, so the they second all one is I am your mouse. I am your mouse. The first one is I am your Yeah, and teacher. I couldn't figure out why they were laughing so hard <laughs> out of their seats and everything. They're falling yeah. over and they're just like cracking up, holding uh, their stomachs. I'm like, what? How rude, you know? You guys are laughing at me. They're like, oh, oh, oh you said you're a mouse. Ha, ha, ha. And I was like, oh. So what is, what is mouse? Let's spell mouse on the Lao screen. shu. Lao shu. L it sounds almost the same, right? Lao yeah. shu. Lao, Lao shu. Lao shu. Yeah. Lao shu. And in English, Lao shu. it's in, in, the, in pinyin, it's Lao shu, S-H-I. S-H-I, <coughs> Lao shu is teacher. Right. S-H-O, S-H-U, S-H-U, Lao okay. shu. So Lao one shu. letter change. One letter change. Go from... Teacher, teacher to, to mouse. To mouse. Okay. Yeah, so it was pretty uh, embarrassing. I was yes. like, oh, I didn't know I had said it wrong, so I was very surprised. Was so like, what was the song? Tell us about the song. Lao Shu Ai Da Mi. Lao Shu Ai Da Mi, Mouse Loves Rice. Okay. So then when they translated back to me what I said, what I actually said, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's okay because uh, 我是你们的老师,你们是我的大米, 老师爱大米. And they were like, oh, you're so sweet, you're so sweet. Because I was like, oh, it's okay, 没问题, 没问题 means it's okay or no worries. 没问题, yeah. 没问题. May, like the month, May, one sounds like one, T. May wants T. May one T. Can right? we put that on the screen too? Yeah. No problem, right? May one T means no worries or no question. Spell that out again. May, M E I. M E I, first word. Uh huh. One, W E N. W E N, second word. May one T, T I. T. T I. Just the third word, T. May one T. May, may one T. Yeah. It's not a third no problem. Tone. I mean, no problems, right? So I don't, no worries, it's fine. I am mouse, you are rice. <laughs> mouse loves rice. 
That's the name of the song, Lao Shu Ai Da Mi. Everybody knows it because it was the most popular song of the summer. So they're like, oh, you're so sweet, you're so sweet, Lao Shu, you're so sweet. <laughs> Lao Shu, you're a Lao Shu. Yeah, so it was. Uh, <laughs> so sing us the song. Wo Ai Ni, Ai Jin Ni, Jiu Shan Lao Shu Ai Da Mi. Um, I love you like mouse loves rice. Oh. Yeah. So so they so I won them over at this point. They're like, oh, you're so sweet, you're so sweet. Was, I, the little do they know. So there's a key phrase in there. Will I need? I yeah, yeah. yeah. Will I need? I, I love again, you. Uh, I. Uh huh. And then I do need just like. I like. And then ni, we heard that word again just a couple of minutes ago, mm -hmm. right? Ni means. So let's spell it out. Three words. Wo, w, wo, u. Wo, w, o, wo. Yeah. Okay. I. I, a, i. Yeah. Ni, n, i. So three words. W, o, uh -huh. a, i, uh -huh. n, i. Uh -huh. Wo, wo, i, ni. Everybody knows this one. This is something that you would not normally say to someone you've just met. Or no, it's, a, it's like a romantic kind of song. It's a love song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are the Chinese romantic? Hmm. Well, I'll tell you a little secret. Tell us you can't about tell your anybody. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> details, details. Well, you got good enough in the language to have a boyfriend. Well, yes, of course, because I date in the target language. Oh. That's how I can speak so many languages. Oh. Because um, I look for people who can speak my language, a uh, language I'm trying to learn. Um, so, of course, I didn't know Chinese, so I looked for a Chinese boyfriend. When I was working on Spanish, I looked for a Spanish boyfriend. So yeah. I date purposefully okay. in the target language because I feel like there's only so much you're going to get in a book or in a class, and you're not going to get the lo colloquial way yeah. of using the language. You're not so going to get, his name, I love boyfriend? you, in, in class, you know? What was his name, your boyfriend? Um, Zhao Hui. Zhao Hui. Zhao Hui. Oh. Z-H-A-O-H-U-I. Z Q. No, Z-H-A-O. <laughs> H U I, Zhao Hui. Zhao Hui. Mm -hmm. Was he a cute guy? Oh my god, he's so Han Shui. <laughs> and Han Shui is? Han Shui. Um, Han Shui. Remember Han means? Han? Han yes. means? Good. Han. Han. Han is very. Honey. Yes, right? Honey. Very. Yes. Very. How is good, right? Oh, so yeah. Han Hao, Han Shui. Han Shui, very handsome. So Shui, what is Shui? Shui, handsome. Oh, mm -hmm. very handsome. Han, Han Shui. Mm -hmm. H E N. Han, yeah, H E N. And Shui. Shui, S H U I. S H U I. Mm -hmm. He was your boyfriend, was oh, very God. Han Shui. Oh, so, how did you connect with him? Oh, Is yeah. So, um, the school, one of the schools I was working at, the principal took all the teachers out in the evening. We went out dancing, of all things. So, that's really interesting. And that's why I met um, Zhao Hui. And, you know, I was just talking, you know, making small talk, conversation like that. And I was just like, hey, you know, like, why don't we hang out tomorrow night? Oh, okay. Are you going to come here again? This kind of thing. Okay, let's meet up. You know, oh, then that's how we all got started. Yeah, he was very open-minded, which was really, yeah. which was awesome. He's very tall, very unusual, and I felt that he was probably the most handsome in all of China, besides yeah. Wang Lihong and Jay Cho. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have your standards, you have yeah. very high standards. He's amazing, he's very smart. Han Tongming, Han Tongming. Mm -hmm. What is that? I'm very smart. Okay, let's spell that out. Hun. Hun is the same. Hun. Oh, look, we're doing a lot with Hun today, huh? Yeah, you guys are going to be masters of Hun. Very Hun. tall. Tong, T O N G, Tong. Han Tong. Ming, M I N G, Ming, Han Tong. H E N, first word. Tong, second word, T O N G. Yes, very good. Ming. Excellent. That's perfect. Very smart. Mm -hmm. Very Han intelligent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just like you, Michael, you're Han Tong Ming. <laughs> you are Fei Chang Tong Ming. Uh oh, what's Fei that? Fei Chang is like super, totally awesome, like amazing. <laughs> Fei Chang Tong Ming. Fei Chang, amazing. Fei Chang. So that's a big compliment. Mm -hmm, that's a huge compliment. It doesn't right. get much bigger than that. <laughs> yeah, so Tai Hao La, Tai Hao, extremely wonderful. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what do we need to know when we're approaching Chinese for the first time? Um, maybe not uh, the Ni Hao Ma, which you, you might have heard a lot of. Ni Hao Ma is a common greeting, but Ni Hao Ma, you wouldn't say to somebody the first time you meet them. Oh. You would say Ni Hao the Ni first hao. time you meet them. If you see them again and you have some type of um, relationship established, then you can ask them Ni Hao Ma. And Ni Hao Ma is kind of like aloha. Like, we don't really use that amongst each other, do we? We use right. that mostly with tourists or what have you, but we don't call each other and say, hey, aloha, Michael, right? Yeah. So we would ask you know how you're doing they come from a deeper place than a how are you doing it's kind of surface ni hao ma is kind of surface but if you want to go deeper mm. which is really impressive if you could do that is ask 
I mean, if you know them, you need to know them. You need to already have a relationship. If not, just ni hao is, is more than enough. Mm. But if you want to go deeper, you can say, ni chilema, mm. ni chilema, ni chilema, ni chilema. Ni chilema. Okay. So ni chilema means, how are, um, have, you, have you eaten? Ah. How's your stomach? How are you really doing? Right. You know, did you eat today? This kind That's of thing. That's deep. So let's spell that out for people. Ni, 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 chi, c-h-i, chi means eat. Ni. Did you eat? Right. La, l-e, ma, m-a. Ni, chi, So ma. four words. N-i, c-h-i, l-e, m-a. Ni, chi, la, ma. Ni, chi, la, ma. And you have to And you're not ask really asking, have you eaten? Right. You're, you're asking how are you doing from a de- like as doing? if you care. This is a question you ask that right. because to show that you care. Well, I know that a lot of conversation, a lot of common words have that word ch in them, mm-hmm. and it's not a, it's not the surface is not about eating. But I I also know that throughout history, food has been very important, and Absolutely. even in recent history Mm -hmm. within the recent memory of many people in China there was hunger people didn't eat or they didn't eat well there was malnutrition there was famine Mm -hmm. you know millions just within the last century Mm -hmm. so when you're talking about food it's not just about a casual thing like like we Americans have we always assume that we pretty much have Mm -hmm. enough to eat Mm -hmm. but in China there's a deeper cultural Mm -hmm. reality behind it that's why it's important that's Mm -hmm. why you you're really expressing care for the person have you eaten? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What chilla? I've eaten. Or made sure, made sure I have not eaten. So is that how you would respond if somebody says um, me chilla? Yeah. yeah. You, you could say, um, you could say han hao. You could say hao. You can say chu. You know, yes, sure. I've eaten. Yeah. Right. If you wanted to be really sure about it. Or right. What chilla? What made sure? I have, a, I have a favorite Chinese word. Yes. That I love the sound of it and I love the, the, um, utility of it mm-hmm. many many different ways mm-hmm. kai. kai kai it sounds really beautiful it sounds like kai like a hawaii kai it sounds like <laughs> but oh, kai sweet. means i agree it's fine mm-hmm. yes it's another one of those that is very flexible mm-hmm. as to what it means by the intonation and by the context mm-hmm. but it's a uh, seems like a very intelligent word to say mm-hmm. that people people understand that you're you're saying I, I really I hear you I accept what you say okay can we it. spell that and put it on the screen mm, it would, sounds like K-A-I Kai. Kai. okay so just one last word I like to throw in the mix is yes. um, mayo mayo means um, don't have don't have mayo May. sometimes they abbreviate it with may um, but we understand that it means mayo, and it's really easy. It sounds like mayonnaise. Yeah. We use already in the English language mayonnaise, so mayo. we call it mayo. Do you want mayo with that? So right. mayo means don't have. Right. I don't have well mayo. Do you have this mayo? Don't have. So how would you say no? Thank you. Uh, bu she she. Oh. Bu she she no bu, bu she she. she she. Thank you. Okay, we've got a few a basic sure. words that mm-hmm. we can start putting in the mix, and okay. I hope we get to carry this forward at another time. Thank so you. thank you so much, Joanne.